Hey folks, this is Ian. I'm an artist at Pingwa, and today I'm going to be using Krita to show you how to set up a page for creating comics. So once you have Krita open, we're going to go to File New or hit Control N, and then this dialog will pop up. Uh, the design template you use or the custom document depends largely on how you're going to use the final product. I'm just going to use an A4 design template, use this template, and it will open our blank page. first thing we need to do is establish our gutters and margins. Uh, the interior gutter is used particularly in printed comics to avoid loss of art area once your book is bound. It also establishes a visual blank space around your panels and allows the reader to distinguish clearly between one panel and the next. So to do this we're going to need some grids and guides. It's down here in my panel but if it wasn't I'm going to show you how to get it. We're going to go up to settings and we're going to go to dockers and just scroll down to see grids and guides, check it, and there it is. Uh, in your grid panel, you have some options. We're gonna show the grid. We're gonna turn on snap to grid, and you have different grid types you can choose. We're gonna stick with rectangle. Your spacing here defines how wide your grid points are. I'm going to set this to 40 by 40. Oops. This is constrained here to constrain the proportions. If you want an oblong shape on your grid, you can just unchain that by clicking it. But by default, it is chained, so you'll link the top and bottom. Subdivisions are these dotted lines here. I don't need those, so I'm going to change that to one so we have none. 40 by 40 in an A4 makes a nice even division width-wise. And then at the bottom with main style and divide style here, we can change our subdivision and mainline grid colors. They're gonna go into guides. Again, you can change the line color. I have it set to this pink just because it's a bright color that's not going to appear naturally in my page. I'm going to turn show guides on and show rulers. This is off by default. We'll just turn that on. To add a guide, you're going to click in the bounds of the ruler, click and drag down. I'm gonna drag down three from the top, three from the left, and three from the right. And at the bottom of the page, I'm gonna go three and a half. Now this gives you a live page area in the center here that conforms nicely to the golden mean, which is a mathematical ratio that provides really pleasing compositions. And now that we've defined the live area of the page, we can turn off the grid. We're just gonna unclick show grid and we're going to lock those guides so we don't accidentally move them. And this is the point, make sure that you're on a new layer, not your background layer. This is a point where we can start sketching out our comic page. So I'm just gonna take a standard number two pencil and I'm gonna draw in my scene and I'm going to quickly sketch out the areas where I want my panels to be and a general layout. So I'll be back with that in a moment. Now I have my entire page laid out roughly where I want my panels and what I want the content of the panels to be. So I need to put some guides down to find the edges of those panels. So I'm gonna go back into grid. I'm going to turn on show grid and snap to grid again. And I'm gonna drag out some guides down to the edges of where I think they should be. So for now, I'm going to try and keep a gutter space that is roughly 40 pixels wide, just to keep it consistent. Now that I've completed those guides, I'm going to drag out some selections and fill them to make my panel areas. I'm gonna make a new layer by going to my layers tab and clicking the plus button. Now I have a new layer. I'm gonna double click it to rename it layers so it's easy to remember. On the toolbar, I'm gonna to grab a rectangular marquee and I'm gonna go back to guides and lock those guides so I don't move them. 
I no longer need the grid, so I'll turn off show and snap. But I will keep on snap to, to guides and lock guides. I'm gonna click and drag out a selection. So it fills the area. And I'm going to fill it with black. And then I'm going to cut in and reduce that. So to do that, you can hit D to make sure your default colors is selected. And you can go to edit and you can fill with foreground color or hit shift backspace. And it's just gonna fill in a large black area. I'm gonna hold shift and click and do this for the remainder of my panels. So when I hold shift, I'll get the little plus icon appearing in my selection tool. Krita is unique in that you have to hold shift for the entire time you're dragging. If I let go of it at the end and release, sometimes it will not think of that as adding to the selection, but making a new selection. Holding shift and drag from my panels and then holding shift and backspace to fill those panels. Now I have all these still selected. I don't want the entire area to be black so I won't be able to see. So I'm going to shrink my selection and then erase the center. We're going to go to select, shrink selection, and I'm going to reduce it by 10 and see how that looks. And then hit backspace. And now I have some nice big chunky borders. Actually, I'm gonna use delete instead of backspace. Backspace will actually fill with the background color, which is white, which is why I can't see my background right now. So I'm going to delete to cut that area out. So now um, I'm going to show you a trick to keep your art within the bounds of these selections. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to drag it beneath layout. Double click it. I'm going to call it panels. And now I'm going to fill this area by hitting backspace with white. And I'm going to, on the layout uh, layer, I'm going to select the layout layer and then I'm going to turn on inherited alpha. What inherited alpha does is restricts everything below. Um, right now it's restricting to the entire area of the page because I need to group this. So I'm going to click layout and I'm going to hold shift and click panels and then I'm going to hit control G to group them. Now they're in a group. So anything applied to the layer only applies to the things within that layer. So the layout layer is taking the alpha or the transparency information from the layer below it, which is the panels. And because the panels only have visual information within these selections, everything outside of that uh, selection is invisible. So now if I make a mistake in my drawing, it's going to not draw it outside the lines and I'll keep nice, clean, empty margins. Now I can go back into guides. I'm going to unlock my guides and then I can drag out. I'm going to hit shift control A to unselect and then I can drag out these guides. I'm just going to keep the edge guides for now, but the interior page, I'm going to keep them there. And I'm going to turn off snapping because I don't want to be sticking to those edges. I'm also going to rename this layer to panel borders. So I can turn that off or on. And I always see my clean page layout. In a future video, I'm going to talk more about inherited alpha and clipping groups and other things that you can do to keep your art clean and do some shortcuts for filling areas. Uh, but for now, this is basically how you're going to set your page up when you're going to be making comics. So until next time, keep drawing. Bingo up.